Chapter 2 I quickly remembered why the first day of school was so bad. Hordes of students around us were clamoring to get to their homeroom to grab seats for their friends before all the good ones were gone. And the freshmen stood in tiny groups, blocking the corridors, looking lost and overwhelmed, even a little sick in some cases. It was weird not to spot Noah's head somewhere, cutting a path through them all. Lee's shoulder bumped against mine, and I locked my fingers around his wrist so we didn't get separated. I looked over my shoulder. I've lost the others. They know their way. Lee paused for a moment, and someone barreled into me from behind before cursing at us and moving around. Lee tugged me down the nearest corridor, taking a detour to our homeroom class. Any other day, this way this would take twice as long, but today at least we avoided being trampled. Mr. Shane, our senior year homeroom tutor, was an English lit teacher. So his classroom was covered in posters of the books his classes would be studying and A4 photos of authors like John Steenbeck, Shakespeare, Mary Shelley, and F. Scott Fitzgerald. Mr. Shane himself looked like the stereotypical French out-of-grade school teacher. He wore fin-framed glasses. His tie was slightly a shoe and his shirt was only tucked in at the front, and he didn't have that hard look on his face that some of the older teachers did when they were sick of teaching the same syllabus for twenty years straight. He smiled at us individually as we came into the room. Rachel and Lisa had clearly arrived only moments before, since they were just putting their purses down on desks near the window. Lee made a beeline for the desk next to his girlfriend, Rachel, and kissed her on the cheek. I looked at the desk on his other side, but it was already taken. Oh, sit by me, Lisa chirped when I hesitated, gesturing at the desk next to her in front of Lee. She'd been dating our friend Cam for a few months and had become part of our group ever since. Did you guys meet Levi yet? I was over at Cam's for dinner just after he'd moved in, so we went to say hi together. He was kind of shy, I think, but he seems cool, and I'd kill for eyelashes like his. And his hair? It's just so curly. I'm in love with it. I smiled in reply, and she turned to resume her conversation with Rachel. Lee had pulled his chair closer to Rachel's, looking at her with a gooey expression, and I tried not to feel too stung that he'd picked a desk beside her over one next to me. I was still getting used to the new dynamic that Lee going out with Rachel had created. I hadn't really noticed it until our time at the beach house this summer, and now, now I wasn't around to help soften the blow of Lee choosing his girlfriend over me. Once almost all the desks were filled, Mr. Shane started with the typical first day back speech, how he hoped we all had a good summer, but now we had a really big year ahead and how important this year was for each of us and that some of us would need to knuckle down and work hard. He was about halfway through this spiral when there was a knock at the door and the school secretary stepped inside with a polite smile. Sorry to interrupt. You have a new student in your homeroom and I thought I'd show him up here. My fault he's late. There was some paperwork that needed to be checked. I turned to look at Lee, who raised an eyebrow at me. Our heads swiveled to look at the new student, though I had a feeling I already knew 
who it was. And I was right. Levi timidly stepped in from behind the secretary, and his mouth twitched, like he wasn't sure if he should smile or try to look cool. He was still wearing his sunglasses on top of his head, and where they pushed all the hair back from his face, I realized how long his face was, and his chin was sort of pointy, but not in a ferrety way. Actually, seeing him from a distance, he looked taller than he was. A few of the girls across the room started to whisper to each other. His shirt was free of creases, but only tucked in on one side, and his sweater was slung over his shoulder, underneath the strap of his backpack. It was like he was trying to make his uniform sloppy to be cool, but he still looked pretty clean-cut. "'Well, welcome. Come on in. Find a seat. What's your name?' "'Levi Monroe.' When Levi spotted Lee and me, his face brightened. Before he could zigzag between the desks to the empty one in front of me, he tripped, arms pinwheeling, alarm taking over his face. He grabbed at a nearby desk for balance, only to bring that crashing down with him. Someone coughed, trying to cover a laugh, and then Lee and I burst into giggles. One guy moved to give Levi a hand up, another one writing the desk he'd knocked over. Even Mr. Shane was laughing, though he was trying not to. Levi, without so much as a blush, tossed his head back and dropped his shoulder, turning gravely to the class. Let it never be said that I don't know how to make an entrance, he bowed, and Lee whooped behind me, more people laughing as Levi made it to the seat in front of me, this time without falling over his own feet. He swung the chair sideways so he could see us and the teacher. Hey again, he said tentatively. I could understand why Cam hadn't wanted to be stuck with the new kid, but I felt sorry for the poor sap. It couldn't be easy, moving in your senior year. I smiled to put him at ease. It's Ella, right? L, I corrected him. I jerked a thumb over my shoulder. And that's... Lee, I remember, yeah. He looked at Lisa. We met the other day, didn't we? Yeah, Lisa. He nodded. Lisa, got it. And this is Rachel, Lisa said, gesturing behind her. Lee's girlfriend. I'm going to have to start making a list. I'm never gonna remember who's dating who. I'm bad enough at remembering names. If you yell, dude, I can almost guarantee one of us will look up, Lee suggested. Mr. Shane started talking again, and we fell silent. He must have been pretty cool as far as teachers went, but we knew he wouldn't exactly appreciate us talking through his little speech. When our class schedules were handed out, everyone started buzzing of conversation, comparing theirs with their friends. I snatched up Lee's immediately, pouring over it. Well, what's the damage? Different classes for English Lit, I said. And you are an AP Calculus. I'm in Algebra, too. Everything else looks good. Phys Ed? Phys Ed at the same time. Yes. You know how much I love watching you take people out in dodgeball. You know how much I love taking you out in dodgeball. I passed back his schedule so he could compare it with his girlfriend's, but she was still busy comparing with Lisa. I looked up and saw Levi chewing his thumbnail, looking at all of us out of the corner of his eye, like he was too shy to join in, but he wanted to. I leaned forward and said, Come on, hand it over. Le relief was evident on his face that he was being included. We had a couple classes together, but as we talked more about our classes and teachers, Levi began to look more nervous. 
everything okay? I asked. He stuck his chin out, looking diffident. You know I don't want you to feel like you have to hang out with me just because I'm the new kid. I told Cam he didn't have to carpool to school with me, but he said he didn't mind, at least not for the first couple of days, especially while his car is still in the shop getting repairs. But just, you know, don't feel obligated to be nice to me or anything. You haven't given me a reason not to be nice to you. Not yet, at least. Besides, if we are in the same first class together, you may as well walk with me, right? His smile was nervous. You don't have to. Why? Are you an axe murderer? On the run from the cops in Detroit? I fake gasped. Oh my god, I've got it! I bet you are the kind of person who agrees to the terms and conditions without reading them. He laughed, the tension and anxiety falling away from his face. You caught me. The bell sounded, and I picked up my purse. Come on, newbie. Be. The hell on earth that is algebra awaits. Morning classes flew past, and my head felt like I was trying to drive a car in the wrong gear. It was like I'd forgotten how to take notes properly over the summer and forgotten how to just sit down and learn stuff. Plus, I got distracted every time my phone buzzed, wondering if it was a text from Noah. It never was. But now it was lunch, and I could breathe a sigh of relief that the day was half over. I joined the back of the lunch line and leaned my head so it rested on Lee's shoulder. His chin sat on top of my head. Hmm. Smell those tacos? Don't drool on my hair, I told him sternly. I wash it this morning. Lee made a gargling noise in response, and I ducked away before he did actually drool on me. We were the first of our friends to the cafeteria, and once we got our food, we made our way to an empty table near the middle of the room. It was one that some of the seniors used to sit at, and now that they'd moved on to college, I guess that made it ours. As Lee and I took seats opposite each other, he gave me his usual impish grin, and I knew he was thinking the same thing as me. Being seniors was definitely cool. It didn't take the others long to join us. Cam, Dixon, Warren, Oliver... Now Levi, too. Lisa and Rachel weren't far behind, taking the empty spots next to their boyfriends. A couple of girls they hung out with sat at the end of the table by Lisa. As people started swapping stories from their mornings, I noticed Levi looking awkward again, trying to keep up with it all. Lee was giving Rachel gooey eyes, though, so I decided to step in. How are you liking California so far? I asked Levi brightly. Hot enough for you? The girls are, he joked, with a wink that made me blush. Roran snorted, only to choke on his soda so hard that Oliver had to thump him on the back several times. Lee wiggled his eyebrows at me, trying not to laugh. I'm kidding, Levi said. Well... Not, I mean, obviously you are pretty, but no, no offense, I just... God, this sounded a lot smoother in my head. I was going to sound all swerve and cool and funny. We all laughed, then Levi included. That was supposed to be a joke, and now I sound like a loser. Why'd you move here anyway? Rowan asked. We were all wondering it, but every one of us gave Warren a wide-eyed, pursed lip. What are you thinking? Look, catching on, he added hastily. Sorry, dude, I didn't mean to pry. Levi didn't seem to mind too much, though. Nah, it's cool. My dad's a dentist, and my mom was the accountant at the place where he worked. But then the company went bust and my parents lost their jobs, so we decided to move. 
We have some family not too far away, and my mom managed to get another job. So, he cleared his throat after trailing off. So, yeah, here we are. Is it just you and your parents, then? Rachel asked him, crying much less bluntly than Warren had. My sister, too. Sister? Oliver's eyebrows quirked, and he leaned forward. Single? Ah, uh, yeah, considering she's eight years old and still thinks boys have cooties. The boys jeered at Oliver, and he blushed. Levi grinned, running a hand through his curls, relaxing. I take it back, Ollie mumbled, head and hands. Next time, specify little sister, maybe? I'll bear that in mind. Anyway, Dixon said, speaking of siblings... Lee, how's your brother doing at college? He loves it there. I'll be surprised if he even wants to come home for Thanksgiving. Wait, what? I shot Lee a look, but he seemed oblivious. Had Noah said something about not coming home for the holidays? When I was going to see him next. But no, surely he would have told me. I took a breath. He definitely would have told me. I was definitely overreacting. Have his classes started yet? Cam asked me. Uh, yeah. He had math this morning. Ugh. He loved it. Warren snorted again. Who'd have thought Flynn was such a geek, huh? He hid it pretty well. I bet he used to hide textbooks in the seat of his motorcycle. Flynn, Levi said, and then between Lee and me, is that your brother? My brother, Lee explained. His name's Noah. Our last name's Flynn, but everyone always called him Flynn. He's dating Elle. Oh, oh, I... Sorry, I thought you two were related or something. I mean, you don't look that much alike, but the way you guys act, I figured... It's okay, Lee said reassuringly. Easy mistake. Lee and I were twins in practically everything except blood. We'd been born on the same day and had grown up together. We'd been best friends our entire lives. Sometimes people seem to forget we weren't actually related. Lee and Flynn, Noah, God, I don't know what to call him now he's gone, Cam muttered, the last comment half to himself. Through some epic parties over the last couple of years, there was one, a couple months ago, he started chuckling, chest heaving, as he tried to suppress it to finish his story. And Elle got so drunk, she started dancing on the pool table, then tried to strip down to go skinny dipping. Funniest thing ever. Levi raised his eyebrows at me. And here I was thinking you were a wholesome, all-American average girl next door. It was the single most humiliating experience ever, I groaned, blushing over it. The guys were busy laughing at me. I had only vague memories of the night, and I hadn't had more than a few sips of beer at a party since. Although the night had ended with Noah totally coming to my rescue, it hadn't been a total disaster, and I'd seen him in his underwear, Superman boxers, which I'd teased him endlessly over. Ah, come on, Shelley, Lee said with a wicked gleam in his blue eyes, taking my mind off the image of Noah and his boxers. I can think of far more embarrassing things you've done. Shelley? Levi asked. Short for Rochelle, I explained. You should call her Shelley, Rowan told him. She totally loves it. Do not call me Shelley, but... Looking lost and helpless, Levi glanced at Lee. I might let Lee and Noah get away with calling me Shelley, but it wasn't exactly a nickname I had loved. I narrowed my eyes now at Lee, who was shaking with silent laughter. I pointed my fork at him. A French fly dangling off the end. 
you dare bring anything else up, and I will personally rummage through the photo albums in your attic to find those photos of you dressed up as Elvis to show Rachel. Or the Halloween we went as Sonny and Cher. Lee's sombered up at that and mimed zipping his lips shut. Then he stole a fry off the end of my fork and ate it, ignoring the mock glare I gave him. Speaking of parties, Dixon started, playing peacemaker as usual, and then went on to ask who we thought would be most likely to host the first party of the year, and then tried persuading Lee or Warren to host, but they both seemed apprehensive. I looked over at Lee again, who was holding hands with Rachel on top of the table and talking to her in a low voice looking at her like she lit up his entire world. Noah looked at me like that sometimes. It sent a pain through my stomach, not just because I missed Noah, but because seeing Lee so wrapped up in his girlfriend made me worry again a little that I might lose him. I mean, of course I wanted my best friend to be happy, and I was thrilled that he was so in love with Rachel. But now that Noah wasn't around, and I was starting to notice how little time Lee and I spent just the two of us, since he had Rachel, not that I was jealous. All right, so maybe I was a little jealous, just a teeny tiny bit. I glanced over at Levi again. Levi, who wanted to fit in and make friends. Sure. The other guys seemed to like him well enough, and they'd hang out with him, but without Lee attached to my hip, maybe hanging out with the new kid wouldn't be so bad after all.